belongs. No matter what age you are, it's just different ages, um, different cultures, for sure. Um, they're awesome. Or how often do you come down? I come down at least two to three times out of the month, for sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is very welcome. You want to come very often because you want to see what's new. You want to taste everything. They make it feel like home. How's the beer? It's great. Oh. It's awesome. <laughs> Good. Cheers. Your PT interview is with the owner of Border X Brewing down in Barrio Logan. And your tagline, just to start with, is culture, community, and craft. Absolutely. You so got it. you are fresh thinking beyond craft beer. And, you know, craft beer is huge in San Diego. So how do you differentiate and really make your business stand out and become one of the top breweries in San Diego is something that we all want to know about. So listen closely. David, thank you so much. Of course. I'm glad to be here. Now I'm craft, it. culture, community. There we go. Craft, culture, community. There you okay. go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so all of that together is what really makes your brewery special and I think more relevant to the community in which you exist today. Absolutely. I mean, when we first started, it was about craft. It was about making Mexican-inspired craft beers. And so that was the forefront. And, you know, with the craft beer community, it usually is. You start with the flavor. You start with the experience. But when we came to Barrio Logan, we discovered that people are looking for more than just something delicious to drink. They want to have an experience. They want to leave their worries at the door. They want to, you know, uh, get out of the normal world that they're in and relax and enjoy themselves for a few hours. And then when they leave, you know, they can pick up all their worries and everything else. But for those few hours, that's what we do. We kind of wipe their mind and say, you're going to be all right. Come on in, have a drink, enjoy some music, have a great taco. That's it. Tell me real quick about Border X. It, I have a feeling there's a hidden meaning behind that as well. You know, it, it literally started, literally, we were on the border near the border crossing. So we said Border X, it kind of makes sense, border crossing. But I think it's taken on a whole new meaning of its own where we're trying to really cross borders between cultures. And in fact, we see that as a beautiful thing because there are things that are created that don't exist anywhere else. And really, United, the, the America, the United States, we are all border crossers in essence. We've come from different places in the world unless you're Native American. And you've brought those things with you and that's really what's given us this uh, tapestry of culture that we think is just American, but there's German, there's Polish, there's Mexican, there's just about every nationality. And we think that's awesome. And so really Border X became a metaphor for crossing those borders between communities because when we combine the best of what we can bring, we make for a really an incredible country. So it's not just uh, for the locals here and the, this, that's not what I wanted to say. Edit, okay, so, so what you've created is really a comfortable home base for anybody that's crossed the border. Absolutely. <laughs> from anywhere in the world. Absolutely, and I think uh, by integrating where we're from, we're cherry picking those things about our culture, our palate, the things we grew up with, and we're offering them to our customers here in Barrio Logan. And I think if you're Latino, you connect with that common experience that you know we had. But if you're not Latino, you're kind of on a little vacation. You're kind of like, wait a second, there's something going on here that's not the net standard Mexican food or you know Mexican restaurant experience. And that was really our intent, is really to combine the best of what we bring and really create experiences that attract everybody. Whatever's comfortable for you, even if you switch, it's fine. I'll stand right here so okay. that it's more natural for you. Okay. So my opening question then will be, tell me about Border X Brewing and why it exists. What differentiates it among breweries in San Diego? Absolutely. All right. So initially we started Border X with the idea of combining the best of our culture with the culture here in the United States. And you know, there's nothing more American than that. And when you look across all our favorite things, whether it's cuisine, music, or culture, uh, it's really about all these different groups bringing in the best from where they're from. I mean, if you think about it, the modern brewing tradition is very European, but we wanted to add our Mexican roots to that. We wanted to be part of that movement. We wanted to contribute our palate, our ingredients, our traditions, and really enrich the pool of potential delicious, delicious craft beers that people can have. 
And I think we've succeeded. We've been here six years now, and uh, we've expanded into LA, so we have our second brewery tasting room in the city of Bell. And we've had the same su success there that we've had here. People respond to authenticity. People respond to passion. People respond to those things that move them. And And really from a brewery perspective, we wanted to go beyond just making delicious drinks uh, and craft beers. We really wanted to explore food. So here we have in, in Barrio Logan, um, uh, Tijuana style street tacos. So we grew up eating those by crossing the border. And again, we said, you know what, I, I'm sure people here would love to have that as well. And so we did that, but we also bring in art and culture and music that kind of enriches the local scene. And, I think there's an opportunity for innovation when you start looking beyond the same palette of ingredients when you put your business together. And so what we did is we focused on the border and that uh, junction of all these different cultures to create things that are new and exciting and that people have never seen. I think people often overlook some of the things that are in front of them and don't understand this underlying story behind them. So innovation can come from very surprising places. And if you think about innovation, I mean, something as simple as a California burrito. It's a real funny thing, carne asada, french fries, but people in the border area love it. People in San Diego love it. Drive 100 or 200 miles north or, you know, uh, east, people won't know what it is. Well, it is a California burrito, but even in Northern California, they won't know what it is. That's a simple example of combining culinary inspirations to create something new and exciting that people love. So we're all about fresh thinking here at Border X. And one of the things that we learned along our journey is when we first started at the brewery in, Bar in Otay Mesa near the border, it was a standard warehouse with a few seats and the experience we were giving people is, hey, come to a warehouse, see how beer is made, taste the final product. And you know, six years ago, 10 years ago, that was an incredibly innovative experience. Most people had no idea didn't know beer could be made on a small scale, let alone taste beers that have incredibly different flavors. And so when we thought about that, we saw over 85 breweries that were already open at that time exploring that space. But the thing about experiences is, is as human beings, we're always looking for more. Okay, once you've experienced that, uh, sitting in a warehouse, drinking beer, learning about, you want more, you always want a little bit more. And so as we came here to Barrio Logan, we learned that we could do so much more. And so the beer really became the foundation for why people are coming in. But once they come through the door, we knew that they had to have an experience. You know, one of the goals that we have is we want people to leave their worries at the door, you know, to just relax for a moment, because really we're not in the craft beer industry. A lot of people think we are, but the fact is, we're in the experience industry, we're in the hospitality industry, we are in that industry where people can relax, can be themselves, can meet with friends, really to enrich the experience of their own life. And so when you come at it from that perspective, we thought, well, what else could we do? And we had a beautiful tasting room here in Barrio Logan, and we knew a lot of artists, so we asked them, you know what, decorate our brewery with incredible artwork. And it's interesting because artwork can have the power of really helping in that transition process. As people come in from the outside street and come in, they have a most fascinating look as they look around and you know that they're taking it all in, they're receiving this visual stimulus and they stop thinking about whatever was worrying them just a second ago. And really that's the experience that we're trying to provide. So I'm always looking at these customers for that look. And if I'm getting that look of surprise of like, where am I, what's going on, I'm processing all of this new information, then I know that we are achieving our goal. Then you keep innovating and start asking, well, what about music? What about other educational experiences? You know, we have a Mujeres Brew Club here, which is just for women. Now, women have been a group that hasn't really been catered to. No one in the beer industry really thought what would women like from an experience perspective. And so we decided, you know what, let's create an experience around learning about beer and let's make it uh, primarily for women. And, you know, we thought we'd only get 20 people to come in and that would have been success. 
we got 60 people and we had to cap it because we couldn't fit any more people physically in the tasting room. And so we discovered that what are these women coming for? Yes, they love the beer and we're, we're researching and, uh, and exploring beer culture, beer history, beer technology. So they're getting an educational experience, but what they really come for is to be here with other women and to have that bond, to have that experience, again, to leave their worries at the door. And so I think that's really, when you think about at the core of who you are as a business, you really have to think about what is it that I provide? What is it that I do? And when you rethink it that way, it actually amplifies what you can do as long as you keep your objective clear. So one of the things that we strongly believe in is that breweries can be economic catalysts to revitalize neighborhoods. When we first came to Barrio Logan over five years ago, uh, unfortunately, I had fallen on some hard times. A lot of the storefronts were boarded up. There wasn't a lot of economic activity, very few jobs, and you know, great community, but there just wasn't much going on. And one of the things that we came in here and kind of Barrio Logan informed us uh, from a strategy perspective is we need to be supportive of each other. So a lot of the businesses on Logan Avenue have actually been people that I know starting up and putting together businesses and we wanted to be part of that. So the art galleries, uh, Salud Taco Shop, Por Vida, a lot of these stores were uh, developed by people who I was working with together initially. So we all, it wasn't just the success of Border X, it's really the success of Logan Avenue, Barrio Logan in San Diego. And so we've kind of kept that spirit everywhere we go and we consider it to be a real important part of our mission. So one of the things, that, the ways that we express that is we invite small entrepreneurs, craft makers, artists, cupcake bakers to come in and really complement our experience but also support them as they explore their own economic path and wherever they're going to go from a business perspective. And so we do that all the time. We don't charge a commission for the artists because we love what the artists do and we want to support them so that they can make a lifestyle making the thing they love which is artwork. And so all of the artwork that we have here at Border X is always sold and 100% of the, the proceeds go directly to the artists. We also have a lot of, uh, once a month, we have what's called a tianguis, which in Spanish is a market. And we invite all kinds of smaller vendors to come and, sh uh, and sell their goods. They bring earrings, paintings, t-shirts, uh, food products, etc. And we love that. And I think that's a really important role that we need to play, isn't just to be a successful business, but to be a motivation and a catalyst for other successful businesses to arise. So when we first started this business, I had been reading a book called Red Ocean, Blue Ocean. And it was really talking about innovation and competitiveness. And the concept is real simple, that if you understand your business as a fixed set of variables that you're trying to outcompete your other competitors, you may tend to overinvest in some and not really re-innovate and reinvent your category. In a blue ocean is, you're no longer competing. You've reinvented, rethought your entire category and what services you provide, and you do it in a way that the rest of the competition can't even begin to match. And a real simple example of that is if you look at the circus industry in the United States over 20 years ago, there were only five families managed, Circus Vargas, you know, Ringling Brothers, and surprisingly, they were still succeeding to some degree as an entertainment venue, as bringing in more customers, but they were being challenged with TV, movies, and all these other entertainment options, so their attendance was dropping. And the way they thought they would outcompete is by bringing in more animals. So, hey, if Ringling Brothers has five elephants, I'm gonna have 10. It'll be a stampede of elephants. And so they kept following this formula where along a fixed set of variables, they kept trying to be the best at. Unfortunately is the customers didn't really respond to that. It wasn't really reinventing the category of entertainment. And the worst is that they were actually increasing their expenses tremendously. Do you know how much it takes to feed a single elephant or Siberian tiger? It's a huge amount. And at that same time, there was a small circus up in Montreal, you know, up in Canada, and they had a simple concept. We're in the circus industry, and it was the Cirque du Soleil. They made a few really key choices. They said no animals. 
We're not going to play that game. We're going to reinvent the category of circus entertainment. And they also rethought the category. They thought, were we in the industry of animal training or are we in the industry of entertainment? And when you rethought it, you thought, well, other types of entertainment like theater, well, why can't we be more like a theater, like a play, like a drama, like having a series of events that actually tie together and tell a story versus a random series of acts like a circus. So they took a few key parameters, changed it completely, and then were able to now become a multi-billion dollar industry, whereas most of the circuses that I mentioned earlier are almost out of business or are out of business today. And so the way we thought about our brewery was the same way. Are we really going to reinvent the IPA? Are we going to be the best IPA? Are we going to make a double, triple, quadruple, milkshake, juicy IPA? Of course not. That's silly. And there are so many great breweries already making great IPAs. So why not at the same time think about, well, what do we bring uniquely to this challenge? And what we bring uniquely is who we are, our palate, our traditions, our flavors. And so being the 86 brewery in town, which there are now over 150, we said, well, no one else is doing this. So we're in our own blue ocean now. And since we started that process, I think we unleashed something that none of us really expected is that we're incredibly unique. We're usually on the top five lists of breweries to visit in San Diego for, and for being as small as we are, that's really incredible. But I think the reason we get chosen is really simple. After you've been to four breweries, do you really need to go to a fifth one that is identical to the first four? Or do you want to go to somewhere that actually has a very unique experience that you can't get anywhere else? So we've been blessed by really making serious decisions about who we are and the direction that we want to go as far as our values, as far as who we are. And I think that's really important to state that when you think about strategy, take stock of who you are. Take stock of what you bring to the table, because oftentimes that might be the secret, the special ingredient that you can add to your business. One of the most important things about starting Border X, and I learned early on, is that there's an energy when customers come in that they bring either positive, negative, or neutral. And when we get things right, when we have the right music, uh, the right craft beer, the right artwork, the right food, the right ambiance. We create something that I call the vibe. Being in the hospitality industry, the vibe is really important. I don't know if that's the scientific term for what the vibe is, but I can explain it. It's really simply that collective feeling that everyone is enjoying at the same time and that kind of connects us. And it creates a certain energy, is, is what my observation has been that really not only informs the experience that the customers are having, but it sets also a, a standard of, of behavior and, and feeling. And one of the things that makes me most excited about Border X is we've had nights where we've had retired bankers from La Jolla, uh, you know, in their 60s, and we've had a motorcycle club with their motorcycle gear and face tattoos, and all kinds of people from all walks of life enjoying a Latin jazz, a beer, and there's still a vibe in there of great respect, of mutual enjoyment, of being uh, at peace. Um, you know, one of the things I'm really proud of is we've never had any of the typical issues that you would find in a bar or restaurant where maybe people get into altercations or whatnot. And I really credit that to the vibe, to really trying to understand what are people uh, reacting to and how are they reacting to those uh, experiences that they're having. So the music can't be too loud, you know, the, there's a lot of little details that we do to make sure that we always preserve the vibe. And one of the things that I personally bring to the table, I feel, is I'm very empathetic. I have a, I, I like to believe that I have a good feel for trying to put myself in the perspective of the customer walking through the door. I look for visual cues. Are they reacting in ways that I expected them to react? Or are they coming in with a different kind of energy? And, as I mentioned earlier, one of the things I love the most is when a customer comes in and the first thing they do is they look around and just try to take it all in. That is perfect. That's what I'm looking for. And I call that the kind of aha moment where people are really like, okay, whatever I was thinking about in this second, I'm not thinking about it anymore. I'm really prepared to enjoy what it is that's coming next. And I see it when people walk through the door and in particular, 
I've engineered it so that when you walk through the back door, a lot of people think there's just a parking lot or something else out there. And then they see that there's a large beer garden, there's a vibrant artwork, there are great smells and tacos being made on the spot. And again, it washes their mind free of any worries or concerns and they are really in the moment, really enjoying what it is that they're doing. And so that's how we think about Border X. It isn't just about craft beer. Obviously that's a big part of it, but it's really about how our customers are interfacing with who we are. And I think a lot of small businesses can benefit from also putting themselves in the customer's perspective and really understanding what are they feeling and how can they adjust their business model to address all those factors. <laughs>